We've been studying on this wonderful series from the beginning of this new year called It's Time to Take Over. And we have covered a lot of ground in this last one year. I never intended to be so long. I thought maximum I would go for two months. But the Lord has been on this journey wanting to feed us some of the most, uh, you know, important, pungent and life transforming truths. And some of them that I really took personally is it's time to get back to the word. And now it's time to get back to prayer. I don't think I could have shared more. Uh, you know, important messages than those two, the time to get back to the Word of God, how to read the Old Testament, how to read the New Testament, how to study the Word of God. I shared that all with you. It's all available in the archives. It's available. You can get those MP3s and, and benefit from it. Hear those teachings. But now we are talking about it's time to get back to prayer. Right? You, you, you understand what I'm saying? I wonder if your life and your family and your ministry is visibly supported by prayer. Is visibly sustained by prayer. L to put it in another way, I wonder if prayer is the visible engine that constantly calls down the power of God upon or in your life, your family, and your ministry. In other words, let me ask you, is prayer manifestly central or is it peripheral? We need to answer that question. If our life, our family, and our ministry is visibly sustained by prayer, is it, you know, a constant call a visible engine that constantly calls down the power of God in our lives our families and our ministry is prayer manifestly central is it the center of your being or is it at the periphery and so I, I am I am been asking this church and the more I insist it's because we are about to step into a new dimension of power God can only move when you ask and that's what we've been talking why we pray number one is if you don't ask God will not do anything on this earth in the words of John Wesley and Dr. Miles Mundro it is very clear that if we don't ask God will not do anything on this earth and the word on this earth is very important or in this earth is very important because unless we ask in prayer God can't do it because he set a law in the book of Genesis. Secondly, the second reason why we need to pray is prayer is the way that you and I exercise our dominion and our rule on this earth. So by prayer, you exercise your dominion over the situations and circumstances that challenge you, over the devil and all his evil powers that challenge you. We take authority over these forces by prayer or through prayer. That's the reason why we need to pray. Now, I'm going to the third one today. We talked about the name of Jesus and all that. I covered it a lot of ground on that. I'm going to the third reason why we pray. Why pray? Why should I pray? The third reason is to build a relationship. To build a relationship. That's why we need to pray. To build a relationship. Does it pay to pray? This is a question that was asked by a businessman to his pastor. Does it pay, P-A-Y, to pray? Being a businessman, he knew that he could not run his business smoothly unless he constantly asked, does it pay? He knew that. So it was normal for him to pose this question to the pastor. And the pastor, pastor's reply to his question was, I guess it doesn't matter. And if it doesn't matter, why do you pray, pastor? He asked. If it doesn't matter, then why do you pray? To which the pastor replied, and I, and I like this reply, very good. 
because there must be some other reason for praying than that which pays or than that it pays the pastor's reply was powerful he just said one statement but it has it has gone into my head and made me think why do i pray do i pray because i want something i want to be paid for my effort is is prayer a payment you took the effort you took the time so now let me give you some money let me give you some healing let me give you some blessing let me give you this and that does it pay to pray it doesn't matter because to me there is there must be another reason for praying than that it pays if i was to respond to the business to that businessman today i would ask him does it pay to talk to your wife think about it the immediate answer would be of course right he would say of course think of how troubled our marriage will be or would be if we don't talk but let me press the first, uh, the question further let me press the question further are you ready for this do you talk to your wife to your spouse because it pays or because of love yes because of love it's very important for us to think about that do we talk to our spouse because it pays or because of love you and i need to answer that question because you see if we talk to someone right because of what we can get out of it then we have a selfish reason you got to understand that if you talk to someone only because it pays you are doing it for a selfish reason we have to be careful when it comes to praying to god we need to understand what prayer is and i'm going to talk about that now listen to me carefully many christians view prayer in terms of the answers they get many christians view prayer in terms of the answers they get it's very important to them prayer is asking god to meet their needs or getting answers for those needs to them that's what prayer is all about prayer is asking god to meet their needs or their desires or to give answers to their prayers when we track our answers in the prayer journals all right when we track our answers in the prayer journal if we if we have a prayer journal where we start ticking all the prayers that are answered when we track the answers our answers to prayer in in the prayer journals are we not wrecking the relationship our relationship with god certainly yes if all we do is okay i didn't get this answer i didn't get this answer you know god this is still pending if all that we do in prayer is ask god and then just keep on tracking all the answers that we got and the answers that we didn't get then i'm telling you we have not understood that prayer is building our relationship with god why do i need to pray because when i pray i am building my relationship with god say amen somebody let me ask you another question do you evaluate your conversation every conversation with your spouse or a dear friend in terms of what you get out of it do you evaluate every conversation that you have either with your spouse or with a dear friend in terms of what you can get out of it that's miserable because that is a totally selfish person and yet we are guilty of being selfish when it comes to prayer because we majority of us have thought prayer 
is petition. Yes, prayer is petition. That's a, a, a known part of prayer. But that's not all that prayer is. Prayer is building a relationship with God. Amen? Consider your relationships or consider the relationships in your life. Spouse, relatives, friends. All right? A positive relationship with another is a source of hope. That means the more you talk to your spouse or your relative or your friend, the better the relationship is. Am I right about that? I'm telling you, if you have a husband and wife that rarely talk, that is a hell on earth marriage. Sorry to be that blunt. If you, if you never talk to each other, I wonder how you got married. And I wonder how you're living together. That itself is a miracle if you're still in the same house, but never talk to each other. See, we got to understand if we are going to build our relationships with one another, we need to talk. Am I right about that? The more you talk, the better the relationship. So you can, in, you can understand communication is a very important builder in relationship. You can say it's like a foundation stone upon which marriage or, or relationships are built. It's a key. Do you communicate? Do you spend time, quality time talking to the one you love? Do you do that? How much of time do you spend with your spouse, with your children? How much of time do you spend with your friends? How much do you talk to them? It amazes me how when two young people fall in love, that they can sit there for six hours. And in those six hours, three times, they said, I love you. With a, with a pause of one hour in between looking at each other's face, then she would respond, I too love you. And then there's a gap of another two hours. I mean, it's, think about that. They can sit together for six hours and all that they can say is just three words. Well, to them, that's the sublime words. But I'm telling you, I want more than that. I can't, you know, just sit there and, and you say once in one hour or once in two hours, Pastor, we like you. We are praying for you. Oh, my. If that's all that's going to be, I, I would like to run away. Because I am interested in building a positive relationship which becomes the source of hope. Listen, living love relationships provide hope, meaning, and significance to our lives. Let me say that again. Important. Write it down. Living love relationships. Living love relationships provide hope, meaning, and significance to our lives. So if we are not living that love relationship, we have no hope. That is why when a loved one dies, we are left hopeless because we know that we cannot maintain communication with that person at least in this life anymore. So make the best of your relationships while you are alive. Don't tell them once they're dead and cry over the coffin box and say, oh, how, how I would love for you to be here. I would tell you how much I love you. Too late. Too late. Whatever you have to say, say it now. Say amen, somebody. Now listen to me. This is not the shouting message, by the way. This is teaching. All the shouting you had during the teaching on the name of Jesus. But now it's time to think, why do I pray? Is it just to get answers to my needs? Is it just to ask for what I want and get it and then move on? Is that all? Or is it that I want to build a relationship? And the ultimate relationship or the ultimate love relationship must be the one that you have with God. That's the number one. Your ultimate love relationship should be, must be with God. What am I saying? I am saying this. Prayer is more than the number of answers you get. Prayer is more than the number of answers you get. 
Now we are all, you know, caught surprised today. That's why I didn't tell you my topic. I kept it silent. I wanted to keep it in suspense so that you'll get it on the spot. Prayer is more than the number of answers you get. So now I want to ask you another question. What is prayer? What is prayer? If, if I send the mic around, there will be varied answers. Because each one of us has our understanding or our own definition of what prayer is. Am I right about that? To many, as I said a little while ago, prayer is nothing but asking God to meet our needs. Prayer is, you know, wanting answers for all the questions we have. Prayer is, you know, a shopping list being put out before God. And just like you would go to your, you know, to the grocery store and buy provisions for the month. Or go to the departmental store and get all your provisions for the month. And when you bought, you start ticking all the things that you bought so you see what is left out. Many people go with a shopping list, you know, before God. And they call it prayer. What is prayer? Prayer is communication involved involving two, two people. Prayer is communication involving two parties. God listens, you talk. Okay, let me make it the most simplest. The simplest definition of what prayer is, prayer is talking to God. Prayer, what is prayer? The simplest definition. Let's forget about theological expertise now. The simplest down-to-earth definition of what prayer is. Prayer is talking to God. That's it. Period. Full stop. Stop it. That's the answer. Prayer is talking to God. How many of you talk to God? I'm not, I'm not asking about how many of you ask God. That's different. That's petition. But prayer at at the crux of the whole subject on prayer, prayer is talking to God. Talking to God about what? About everything. See, some of us think we can't talk to God about everything. You can talk to God about everything from the thing, the button that came off from your suit. Lord, should I put this button back? <laughs> you can talk to him and say, Lord, I would like a suit or I'd like this. Or from, from the most ordinary mundane things to, to, the, to the real ones. You can talk to God about everything you go through. Thank you. I was waiting for that. I mean, what a privilege that you can talk to God about everything and he listens. Now, some of us may not want to listen to everything that you say. But not God. Even some of the silly things that we say, he listens to it. He listens to it. I remember, you know, uh, uh, a sister sent a, a message on 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 Facebook and you know mentioned uh, you know uh, about a son having escaped a, a you know a, a serious mishap or accident or something and uh, and by the grace of God and the power of God it came through because she used the name of Jesus and you know I didn't respond immediately I I read the testament and gave God the glory that's all I didn't respond back and after one day the sister asked back and said, Pastor, you didn't even reply to me. What's wrong? Did I say anything wrong? And I said, uh-oh. And then I had to write back and say, no, uh, it's just that I, I, you know, took time to, to read it. And I didn't feel immediately to respond. And then she sent another mail saying, I'm sorry, Pastor, but I'm so childish. That if, if, you, if you don't reply to me, I start asking God all the questions. Did I do something wrong? Is the pastor angry with me? Oh my God. See, that's a childlikeness. Do we talk to God like that? No, I'm not saying the sister is wrong. You know, she, she openly said, I am childlike. I would like to have you respond so that I know that I'm in a vibrant relationship with you. That, that my relationship with you is not surface level. Shepherd sheep, but it's more than that. A brother-sister relationship. I appreciate that. But what I'm saying is, you know, are we like that to God? Expressing everything that we want uh, and knowing that he hears us. 
Now think about this. If you pick up the phone, right? And you just pick up the phone and start talking. And start talking and talking and talking. What will people think of you? If you just picked up a phone, never died, but just started talking on the phone. People will think you need to be admitted in Bagayam. Right? Why? Because if there is nobody on the other side to listen, how can you talk? The reason why we need to pray is because we have a father who wants to listen to what you say. Hallelujah. That's why I love prayer time. Prayer time for me is not religious duty. Prayer time for me is not spiritual exercise. Prayer time for me is communication time. It's relationship building time. It's time where my father just loves to hear me even some of the silly things that I say to him. He says, ah, okay, let's think about it. Let's think about it. When I, when I see the seriousness on his face over the simple, to me it's silly. But he takes it very seriously and listens to me. If I don't have somebody on the other side of the receiver, I won't be talking on a telephone. I don't just dial a number and then start talking and talking and talking and talking. No. Until the person picks up and says, hello, then I begin the conversation. That's how you talk. Am I right? I hope so. <laughs> Let's think about it. Do we know that God hears? If you are talking to God, pouring out your heart like Hannah did, let me tell you, God hears. God is a listening God. I wish I had a witness in here. God is a listening God. So what is prayer? Prayer is talking to God. Let's even leave the word communication. Prayer is talking to God. Let's make it as simple as that. But one must be assured that the father-child relationship with God is a reality. You must make sure about that. You must make sure that the father-son relationship with God is a reality. It's not a myth. We don't have a distant God who sits up there and he has no connection with you. No, he is your father. The closest of relationships he has given us, father. Oh my, that's why I love being in the new covenant. Because the new covenant does not present God to me as God. He presents God to me as father. Oh, I tell you, you better celebrate the, the moment you're living in. Some of us always, we want to go back and be like Moses and be like Abraham. All these people who had God appear to them, my friend, they all were servants who addressed God as God. But we are sons and daughters addressing God as Father. That's the reason why the new covenant is such a powerful covenant. Why couldn't he do it in the Old Testament? Because of sin. Sin was not removed, it was only covered. And as long as sin was in a person, they could not have sonship. They could have a fellowship. They could have a relationship. But they could not get the sonship. So they were servants addressing a big God. But in the new covenant, the blood of Jesus does not cover sin. The blood of Jesus has removed sin. Oh, come on, talk to me, somebody. Listen, the, the blood of Jesus does not just forgive sins. It has removed sins. And if my sin is removed, I have sonship now. And if I have sonship, the Bible says in Romans chapter 8 and verse 15, now we have been given the spirit of God whereby we cry, Abba, Father. We don't have the spirit of slavery. But we have the spirit of sonship whereby we cry out, Abba, Father. Glory to God. Everybody say, Abba, Father. Isn't that wonderful? Abba, Daddy. When I pray in my home, I say daddy. All the time I say daddy. When I'm, I'm, I'm traveling the car, I say daddy. Any, any now and then I'll stop and say daddy. That's how I make it because I like the word daddy better. Because it makes it very close to me. Now you use whatever word you like. But the basic thing is that I have a relationship, a vibrant, vital relationship with God. And I'm not satisfied just asking him for things. I want to talk to him about everything. Even when I'm not asking for a favor, I just want to talk to him because he wants to hear me. 
Are you glad you have a God who wants to hear you? Oh, hallelujah. Let me show you a few verses to back up what I'm saying. Prayer is a relationship with the Father. Matthew 11, please. Matthew 11, 25. When you found it, say amen. Everybody found it? Matthew eleven twenty-five. 25. At the time Jesus answered and said, I'm sorry, at that time Jesus answered and said, I thank you, what? Mm -hmm. I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and have revealed them to babes. So what is he addressing God as? So what is Jesus doing right here? Talking, praying. He says, I thank you, Father. All right. Matthew 6, please. Matthew 6. Matthew 6. Verse 6. But you, when you pray, go into your room and when you have shut your door, pray to your? Pray to whom? Not to God. Not to the omnipotent. Not to the omniscient. Not to the omnipresent. Are you there, church? Not to the God of goodness and God of kindness and God of mercy and God of meekness and all that stuff. No. He says, when you have shut the door, pray to your father who is in the secret place. And your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. So again, he connects father to prayer. Can you see that there, church? In Matthew eleven twenty five, 25, in prayer, he is saying, I thank you, father. In Matthew 6, 6, he says, when you shut the door and go to pray, he says, pray to the Father in secret. So your prayer is a relationship, a talking with the Father. Luke chapter 11, please. One more, one more scripture. Is that okay? Luke 11. Verse 2. So he said to them, when you pray, say, ah. When you pray, say, our Father. So prayer is a relationship being built by you between you and God. Or between God and you. Prayer is the building of a relationship with my Heavenly Father. So if you really want to build a relationship with your Heavenly Father, you got to pray more. The more you pray, the more that relationship is solidified, enhanced, deepened with the Father. The more you pray, the, is, the more you talk. And the more you talk, the better that relationship. Amen? Now, prayer is what? Talking to God. But let me tell you this, prayer is more than mere words. Prayer is more than words, mere words. Now I know we use words in prayer, no doubt about that. You cannot talk without words, am I right? You can't do that. We, we, we don't do that. We, we talk. And when we talk, we use words. But prayer is more than mere words. Though we use words in prayer, listen to me carefully, simply mouthing words is not prayer. Though we use words in prayer, simply mouthing words is not prayer. Otherwise, as C.S. Lewis said, a team of properly trained parrots would serve just as well as men. Yes or no? Let me explain. You take a, 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 a parrot, all right, and you teach it, loving father, I come to you in Jesus' name. So you teach it, you train it, the parrot, every time you come, it says, loving father, I come to you in Jesus' name. May I ask you the question, is the parrot praying? Now I know you're laughing at me funny. You're saying, is it that basic? Yes. See, all that the parrot is doing is mouthing words that you taught it. 
Or let me say you, you taught your, let's say you have a parrot. And you taught the parrot to say praise the Lord. Thank you Jesus. So every time you walk into the room or any time a visitor comes, it says praise the Lord. Thank you Jesus. Is the parrot praising God? The, the visitor who comes says, wow, what a praising parrot you have. Does he say that? He says, well, you taught your parrot some good manners. Some good things. That's all he says. See, because the parrot says praise the Lord, it is not praising the Lord. It's just mouthing words. Too many of us are mouthing words and calling it prayer. No, prayer is a heart thing than a mouth thing. Prayer is deep calling unto deep. The deep that is your spirit communicating with God who is a spirit. Deep communicating with deep. Your deep calling to his deep. A relationship beyond words. That's prayer. It's more than words. Number two. Are you getting what I'm saying church? Is it too deep this morning? No answer. Do I take it deep? Is it okay? If not, please tell me. I'll, I'll make it more simpler. Prayer, I'm saying is, all I'm saying is, why do we need to pray? Because when I pray, I build my relationship. How do I? Because what prayer is? Talking to God. So next time when you pray, now there is a time where you have some needs and you ask God. That is prayer too. But that's not the only prayer. Because number one, prayer is more than mere words. Number two, prayer is more than petition. Now, while petition, asking or desiring things from God is a well-known part of our prayer life and it is biblical, we do have something called the prayer of petition. There are different kinds of prayer. I can't cover that in this, in this teaching because I just want to give you the nuggets, the main you know, thoughts on prayer to you know, uh, provoke you to pray, to, to really push you, to goad you to pray. So I can't cover the whole subject on prayer. We'll do that some other time. But I want you to get this. Prayer is more than petition. There are many kinds of prayer. One of them is prayer of petition. Prayer is more than just asking God for things. Yes or no? If we never move beyond I want or give me, then our prayers, I tell you, and the relationship flowing out of them will be stunted and unsatisfying if your prayer doesn't go beyond I want or give me then our prayers all right with the relationship flowing out of them will be stunted stop growing will be hindered growth will be hindered and your relationship will be unsatisfying imagine a friendship or a or a marriage all right imagine a friendship or a marriage on which nothing more than requests and demands are made think about that if you have a marriage or you have a friendship in which nothing but requests and demands are made I need this give me that Would you ever want to be in a relationship like that? No affection. No thanks. No appreciation. Alright? No compliments. No sharing of dreams and, and visions and hopes and even our sorrows. If all that we ever have in, a, in that relationship is give me this. Give me that. If all that you can talk about your husband is pay the school fees of the children, go pick up the child at three o'clock, go to go go and leave them in school in the morning. When you're coming back, please buy me a sari. If all our talk is only I want this or give me that, I tell you, would you ever want to be in a relationship like that? Certainly not. You have to be careful of what you answer also. Certainly not is a stronger word than just saying no. I don't know about you, but certainly not. I don't want somebody who uses me as, a, as, as an ATM card. 
where you push it in and money comes out to buy whatever you want. So they tell you, if you have your ATM card, you can shop crazy. Yeah, I can shop crazy if you give me the money free. And don't ask me to pay back at the end of the month. Have you seen all these ads that come in your telephone? Go and shop crazy. Shop till you drop. You have our card. As if they're giving it free. No, you have to pay it. You have to pay it after 60 days or 45 days or however, how many. So don't shop till you drop because you may not get up after that. Just be wise. But just think about this. If all that our relationship is or friendship is, is only about asking. No thank you, no hello. How good you look. Beautiful, lo lovely dress, brother. You're looking smart today. If I never say that, he won't want to come back to the church. If all that I talk is just preach to him and say, don't you talk another word to me. All that I will talk is only from the pulpit. God bless you to you. If all that I do to you, none of you will come back. Hello. Come on, let's be honest. That's true. No, we want a relationship. We want something more than just praise the Lord. The Bible says, let's turn to the word of God. If all that I talk to you is that, my friend, Soon I will be talking to chairs. Yes or no? Come on. Write this down, please. Write this down. Prayer is nothing more than an ongoing. Prayer is nothing more than an ongoing and growing love relationship with God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Prayer is nothing more than an ongoing and growing love relationship with God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So what is prayer? An ongoing and growing love relationship with the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Wow, what a, what a, what a relationship that is. Nothing can compare with that, my friend. I mean, you can talk to your dad all you want. You can talk to your mom all you want. There's value. There's greatness in that. But nothing can compare to talking with your heavenly father, with your elder brother, and with the wonderful comfort of the Holy Spirit. The more time you spend with them, the more stronger you become. And when that relationship hits the summit, I tell you, all demons will stand in salutation when you walk. They will know that this is a son that has spent time not in asking God, but in developing a relationship. Are you interested in relating to God? Or getting from God. I want to have both. But more than the getting. I want to give my adoration to him. I want to say thank you Lord. How great you are. I want to come time and time again. And say Lord how wonderful you are. You are so magnificent. Look at how beautiful you are. You are the rose trampled on the ground. You took the fall. And thought of me above all. I mean how can you not talk to him. Thank you for choosing that song. He didn't know what I was going to preach. But let me ask you, is that the relationship you have? That's how much he thinks of you, that he would come and be trampled. Trampled by, by wicked men. Trampled by men who never knew him, who don't have a covenant relationship. They sent the thorns. They sent the you know, spear. They sent the nails. They did everything. Those cruel Roman, ungodly, uncircumcised, you know, enemies of the gospel did all to him and he said not a word. Why? Because while he was going through it all, he was thinking of you and how you're going to get saved, how you're going to become a son, how you're going to be a daughter. And he was thinking of the days you're going to call upon him and say, thank you, Lord, for dying for me. Thank you for loving me so much. Thank you for being crushed like a rose so that I could blossom like a rose in the wilderness. Thank you for losing your fragrance that I might receive and give a wafted fragrance of my Savior. I tell you more than the Charlie or the Brute or whatever name of uh, a perfume you use. More than that, the best perfume you could ever wear is Jesus Christ. He is the best perfume that lingers and lingers. You don't have to press it every time. No, once you press it and stay with him and stay in a relationship with him, you will be smelling like him all through eternity. Oh God, I wish I had a witness down here that loves him enough to say, Lord, fill me with the fragrance of your presence. For me, prayer is more 
then asking prayer is me talking, accepting and acknowledging that this is an ongoing, ever continuing, growing love relationship between me and my heavenly father and my elder brother and my wonderful Holy Spirit, my comforter. Hmm. Glory to God. Listen, just as we grow close to the people with whom we spend quality time with, So we get close to God by spending time in his presence, praising, thanking, seeking wisdom, making petitions. Think about this. That's what you do in the presence, not just ask. You are praising, you are thanking, you are seeking wisdom, you are making petitions, you are meditating in his words. Are you there, church? All this you're doing while you're in his presence. So what are you doing? Praising, thanking, seeking wisdom, making petitions, meditating on his word, and then finally, listening for his commands, his instructions. That's what prayer is. But all of us, all that we know in prayer is, Father, my child needs this, my husband needs that, my wife needs this, you know, my uncle needs that, my mom and dad needs this. That's all, I, you know, I need an increment, I need, a, you know, the boss to have a change of heart, I need to get this job, I need to get that, that, that job, I need to go here, I need to do that, this, or go there. That's all. No, there's more than that. Prayer is praising God. I said prayer is praising God. Prayer is thanking God. Prayer is seeking wisdom. Prayer is making petitions. Prayer is making intercession for others. Did you know that? Prayer is meditating on his word. Prayer is listening for his commands or to his instructions. Are we doing that? Oh my. Listen. Prayer is not meant to be a magic remedy for supplying wants and needs, at least not exclusively. Prayer is not meant to be a magic remedy supplying our wants and needs. Jesus is not Santa Claus. Many people make Jesus like Santa Claus, that he will come in the night and put tuck under their bed or under the Christmas tree what we need. Jesus is not Santa Claus. God is not Santa Claus. God is not Nicholas. God is your father. He is not carrying a magic wand. And all your, your house is filled, your table is filled with, with food. No. Has he ever waved a magic wand over your table and then it was all filled with food, my brother? How do you get food on your table? Preparing. How do you prepare? I know, I know, I know I put you on the spot. You have to buy. You have to buy the things to prepare the food. How do you buy? You have to work. You have to work to earn, to buy, to cook. And then when you cook it, you put it on the table, right? God gave you wisdom God gave you a healthy body to work, earn the money, prepare the, buy the groceries, prepare the food, put it on the table. And yet when you sit at the table, you say, Father, we thank you for providing this meal. But he didn't cook it. Come on, think with me, please. He didn't cook it. He didn't prepare the meal. He didn't buy the groceries, did he? No, he didn't. He didn't give you the money to buy the groceries. No, he didn't. But he gave you a job. He gave you wisdom. He gave you an education. He caused you to excel in that education. He caused you to come up so that the job was given when the interview was placed. You got the job. You're getting the money. And now you're getting perks. You're getting increase. You're getting increments. You're getting bonuses. You know, you're getting all that. Now you're able to go home, buy. Now you're able to marry because you got a job. You're working. You're able to earn. You're able to take care of your wife. Now both of you, because you're earning, you're able to have some kids because now you know you have enough money to provide some, you know, some for the kids. And then you educate them. How did it all come? God gave me the wisdom in the first place. See, we must always have an understanding that God is more than just asking. 
I'm building a relationship with God. He is not, prayer is not a magic wand supplying all our needs and wants. The point of prayer, write this down please, the point of prayer is relationship. The point of prayer is relationship. The point of prayer is relationship. Therefore, prayer works if it builds, if it enhances. Are you listening to me? Prayer works if it builds, if it enhances, if it solidifies, and, and if it deepens the relationship between God and you, the Father and you. Four things. Prayer works if it builds, enhances, solidifies, and deepens the relationship between you, or between God, the Father, who hears our prayers, and us, the prayer. The prayer, worshiper, prayer, P R A Y I F N E R. I know it's not good English, but the point is, I want you to get it. I want you to get it. So, what does prayer do? Four things it builds, it enhances, it solidifies, and it deepens the relationship between the Father and you. That's why I want to pray. So, today, I hope you will pray much more than you've ever done in all your life. And to me now, I understand prayer is me talking to God. Just telling him how great he is, praising him, asking for wisdom, you know, asking for guidance, asking for ev everything. I'm just going to talk to God about everything I'm going through. Amen? Oh, yeah. Now, let me ask you before we move on. Do you tend to look at prayer in terms of answers rather than an ongoing relationship with your Lord? Do you tend to look at prayer in terms of answers, number of answers you got, rather than an ongoing relationship with your Lord? The answer is, no, I am looking at prayer as a relationship, an ongoing, growing relationship with my Heavenly Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you this point, and then we'll move on. The last point. I want you to write it down. This is the most powerful one. Prayer is not a program. Prayer is not a program. But a relationship. That's the last one. Prayer is not a program. But a relationship. I want everybody to take that down. And next time when you pray, have that concept. Have that principle before you, please. Take a printout of it and keep it in your prayer closet where you go and pray every day. And when you look at that, it will remind you, oh, prayer is not a program. Prayer is not just asking. There can be asking, but not only asking. That is much more than just asking. Amen? And I want you to really ponder this. Prayer is building a vital, living, vibrant relationship with the Heavenly Father. Why pray? Because I am building a vital, living, vibrant relationship with my Heavenly Father. That's why I need to pray. Did you learn something today, church? Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we praise and thank you for this wonderful service. We are blessed of the Lord to have, Lord, heard this word. What a word. Father, forgive me for the times when I, when I only prayed, just asking. That every time I prayed, it was more asking than talking. It was more petitioning than talking. It was more petitioning than sharing. I'm sorry, Daddy. I'm sorry, I did not understand. There were years I did not understand this important aspect of prayer. But today I've learned it, Lord. We have learned it, Lord. And help us, Lord, to be doers of this word. Help us not to be just talkers. Uh, not, not, not to just be 
prayers, but talkers. That we will talk to the Father. That we will talk about everything. We will not hide. We will not hold back. We will not, Lord, uh, reserve certain things. But we will open up every part and talk to God about just about everything. So that you could give us direction. You can give us instruction. So that you can give us wisdom. And so that we could do your will. Hallelujah. Praise you for your people that heard this word today. Both here and around the world. I pray, O oh God, that we will not be hearers of this word, but doers. Because, Lord, this is more the practical aspect. We talked about the doctrinal aspect the last four weeks. But, Lord, these next few weeks are going to be the practical aspect of prayer. Help us, Lord, to really think about it, to go back and, Lord, listen to it on the archives. God, give us a heart to listen to more of it so that we can become doers of it. We cannot hear it once and expect to do it. But help us to go back, look over our notes, look and hear the message again until it becomes a part of our life. I pray over every believer in this church and around the world that watch this service. In the name of Jesus, make them doers of this word of God. We want to talk to you. To build our relationship with you. But I'm praying also, Father, for those who have, Lord, come here with needs. They also have needs. And so we pray, oh God, meet those needs according to your glorious riches right now. Heal the sick. Deliver the oppressed. Set the captives free. Send them with your blessings. Let nobody come back the same way. Uh, go back the same way they came in. But let them go back to a blessed business, to an overflowing business, to, Lord, uh, increase in business, Lord, to, to, for them to receive more project, uh, projects, for them to receive more, Lord, uh, avenues to be blessed. Lord, let every child of God go back knowing that their need has been met by the miracle-working, extraordinary, irresistible power of God. Let it settle on us. And Father, thank you, Lord, for being in this service and glorifying your Son, our Lord Jesus. We only want him to receive all glory, all honor, and all praise. For we ask this in Jesus' holy name. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the sweet presence, power, and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. And all God's people said one more time. Amen and amen. You are blessed. This week is blessed. I'm telling you, expect great things because we are going to be talking more to daddy and daddy's going to be more listening. And I tell you, you'll come back with a romantic feel next week saying, I had the greatest week with my father. He spoke to me more than I've ever heard him in all my lifetime. Have a blessed love relationship week with your heavenly father. Stay blessed.